We'll be learning the Sicha from Parshas B'Shalech and Chelek Yerav, look at the Sichas, the first Sicha. We won't uh, be learning it inside and perhaps skipping around a bit and give the main points. Obviously, we won't be able to give all the Reichkeit from all of the Mephorshim and the footnotes in, in general to keep the main idea of the Sicha. The uh, Sicha, as we mentioned, in the Chelek Yeralev, so it's the first Sicha, it's from the Rashi and the Posek in Shemes Yudal, the Posek Yud by Yitzaku. You can see here it was printed in Tovshin um, in the, when the Kut Sichas came out. So first we'll learn the Pasuk with the Rashi. So when the Yidin came to the, to the Yamsuf and Pari chased after him with all of his army, he says, Pari Hikri, Yisuf B'nei Yisrael Seineim, the Yidin lifted up their eyes, Vini Mitzrayim Nasea Achreim, they saw that the Mitzrayim were chasing after them, Vayiru Ma'it, and they were very afraid, Vayitzakul B'nei Yisrael El Hashem, and the Jewish people screamed out Hashem. So you see over here, Rashi Ve'yitzaku, in the left-hand side, Tovsu Umnus Avesom, that they grasped the profession, so to speak, of their forefathers, meaning Avram Yisroch Nyankif. Where do we see that this idea of Tefillah was by the Aves? But Avram Hu Eimer says, El Mokam Asher Omad Sham, that after the destruction of Steim, that Avram went back to the place that he was originally standing when he was speaking to Hashem, uh, which means tefillah. The Yitzchak losuch basada. The Yitzchak went out to speak in the field, and Rashi says over there also that sichas loshon tefillah. But Yaakov vayivka b'makim, and Rashi also explains over there that it refers to the idea of tefillah. So the Rebbe asks a number of questions on this Rashi. As far as in, in general, when Rashi says something, as all the Mafarshi Rashi point out, he doesn't comment every place there's a Maimar Chazal. It has to be a question on the pasuk that the Ben Chamesh Mikra is unable to go further because he doesn't understand what it says in the Pasuk. And when he asks the question, the Rashi answers his question. So over here, what's the problem? The Yidin saw the Mitzrim, Vayiru Ma'ed, the Pasuk says, they were afraid. But it's obvious that Vayitzuk Abba Yisrael, Allah Hashem, said he cried out to Hashem. What's difficult to understand that they daven Hashem when they, they saw the Mitzrim chasing after them? That's question number one. Another question, if the word Vayitzaku is not clear, then Rashi earlier in, 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 in Parsha Shmeis, in Perek Beis, Pazach of Gimel, it says also by Yizaku, Rashi doesn't explain, it's obvious. The Ber Chamesh Lamikra already knows the translation, this means tefillah, and Rashi didn't explain it over there, so why does he explain it over here? It's also unusual uh, expression, Rashi uses umonis, or umnis, Aves from their profession. This is we're not talking about a profession. If anything, their profession was Raya Tain. The Ovis were shepherds. So why does Rashi say that Tvila is their uh, umnas? And plus, when we look at the Psukim regarding the Aves, so it doesn't say explicitly in the Pozigal, Makam Sher Omachum. On the contrary, the question is how you see in Pshuta Shemikra that it means Tvila. The Gemara Dashans it means Tvila. But in any case, it's clear that Rashi learns that it means Tvila. And Yitzhak goes, L'suach Basada needs a, a pirush. And so to Vayif Kambab Makam, it's not so clear it's talking about Tefillah. And we have cases where all the Yav is very clearly Davin Tashem. We see the whole section before this Pasuk in Av, uh, regarding Avram, that he was Davin Tashem to save the people of Steim, at least that Tzadikim. And Yitzhak, we see that he Davin Vayatar, that he Davin uh, that Rivka should become pregnant, should have a child. And Yankiv Avinu Davin, that he should be saved from Esau. Very clear cases of Tefillah. That we see earlier in Chumash, many, many cases, that it's obviously the Ovis Davin. So why does Rashi pick these cases, which are not so clear, out of all the cases he could have picked, why did he pick these? There's another general question, which has to do with the, with the entire uh, Pasha. When you look at it in the context of the Psukim, it becomes clear. Over here, we see Targ Munklis over there, he says, Uze'iku b'nei Yisrael kodem Hashem. Um, the, the Ramban has a different uh, a uh, different uh, version of the Targum, and he brings down the Targum saying that the Yidin uh, complained to Hashem. And that explains the whole Hemshech So when you look over here at the Psukim, so here's our Posek Yur, Pari Hikriv, Vayitzuko B'nei Yisrael Al Hashem. And uh, we see over here that the, 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 the B'nei Yisrael were clearly believers in Hashem, they're davening in Hashem. Why would they daven in Hashem if they don't believe in Him? But then you look at Pasuk Yer Aleph, Hayim El Meishem Ibli, Ein Kvarim B'Mitzrayim, Lekachtan Olamus Midbar. there's not enough graves in Egypt, you have to take us out over here. 
and in Pasuk Yud Beis, they continue, Kitev Lanu Avedis Mitzrayim and Musayna Ba Midbar, better than dying in the desert, better we would have stayed in Mitzrayim than, than coming over here. So we see that there's some uh, lack of clarity here. Here, they're dav- are they davening to Hashem? They believe in Hashem. That Hashem's going to save them, but they they're rebelling. And Pesach Yirah and Yitbeis looks like they're rebelling. So the Targum, as the Ramban brings it down, uh, explains that the Vayiz- Ku over here does not refer to them davening to Hashem. Is they're complaining to Hashem? Loshen Tarumas. The Ramban brings down the Ramban. So that would solve the problem. But it's clear that Rashi does not learn like that. Rashi doesn't hint to that at all. Rashi could have said that very simply, and he didn't. So uh, the question is an additional question. Not only does the Rebbe uh, Sheil, is the Rebbe Sheil that Pirush, but then the question is, how does Rashi learn this whole Indian? It's a subject for all of them, of Farsha. And the Rebbe quotes later on, um, also from the Ramban, of course, from other Mepharshim as well, but the Ramban brings uh, a number of different answers. The Ramban, one answer the Ramban gives, and it seems that he would learn that's Pshat in the Mechilta. It's all discussion. Where does Rashi get his Peters from? It's from the Mechilta, Tanchuma. There was a fascinating discussion about that in the Haaretz. In any case, that he seems to learn that in this case, that they didn't change their mind. That they originally, by Yitzhak of B'nai Yisrael Hashem, that they cried out to Hashem, and then they saw they weren't answered. So then it came Pesach Yod Aleph, and then they changed their minds. They saw that the Mitzrayim are not going away in spite of the fact that they davened. So then they changed their mind. But Rashi doesn't hint to that either. So it doesn't seem that Rashi holds from that uh, as well. So to the Ramban brings another Peter that it's two different groups of people. Kitas, Kitas. We learned the Medrash that there were four different groups. But this is two different groups. There were those that davened Hashem and there were those that rebelled and wanted to go back to, to, to Mitzrayim. Um, the Ramban brings such a pirush. But again, Rashi, although Elu Elu Divar Elu Kim Chaim, and these are certainly pirushim, which are um, uh, Alpitera, but when we're learning Pshutu Shem Mikra, Rashi tells you only what the Ben Chamash Mikra needs to get by in Pshutu Shem Mikra, and Rashi does not allude to any of these tirutsim. So although um, they are ways of coming out, but the Rebbe Machadish, a completely different pirush. Well, uh, just to summarize, I have a chart. So you can see the four different pirushim. So you hear the, the, the left-hand column is the Pazag Yeral of your base, when they said, Hamibli and Kvarim and uh, to the, the second from the left is the Pazag Vayitzaku, which is our Pazag over here, Pazag Yud. And the question, did the Yidin believe, or did they not believe when they said this? They had the Emunah Hashem, and they didn't have Emunah Hashem. So according to the Targum, like the Ramban brings down, so therefore they didn't believe at the beginning. So at least the Psukim fit together. They didn't believe at the beginning. They didn't believe, not in Pasuk Yud, not in Pasuk Yud Aleph. And further, the Ramban gives one Peter's that are different kitas, different groups. So some groups believed and some groups didn't believe. So the Vayitzaku is talking about the groups that believed, the group that believed, and the Hamabli and Kvarim in Mitzrayim is talking about those that didn't believe. The other Tarits of the Ramban, that there was a change. The first they believed in Hashem, they davened in Hashem, but then when it didn't work out, then Lehemino, then they didn't believe. The Rebbe brings a whole different Peter over here. The Rebbe, Hayra uh, Nifla, not only how to learn this section in the Chumash, but Bechal how to look at another human being and another Yid Bafrat. The Rebbe brings down the Gemara on Baba Vasra when it's talking about Eve, that it says, Ein Ad Nitvas Beshast Saire, that when a person is experiencing pain, then you cannot judge what he says. Sometimes a person expresses something out of his pain and his, and his bad experience, and he doesn't really mean it. It's an external expression about what's really going inside. So we hear the Yidin, they, they, they believe when they said, Vayitzaku. They believe and they davent Hashem. I, they said later on, So that's an external thing. That's That's not the essence of what a Yid is all about. So everything fits according to this, according to this Pirush. The question is, where do you, where do you see it? In Pshut HaShem Mikra, so the Rebbe brings, in footnote 23 in particular, in the Pnim Rose footnote 23, many proofs for this. So when you look later on, the Emes is, it's at the end of this whole uh, section, that you see Pasek Tezvav, the last Pasek, Vayim HaRashem El Meishem, Matitzek Eilai, Dabra Bnei Yisrael, so the Yidin should go. So what it would say over here, you can see, Dabra Bnei Yisrael, you saw Rashi says, Ein lahem el elisa, sheina yam ein bifneim. Yam is not standing in front of them. It's not an obstacle. Kedai zchus aviseim. Veheim vahamunah shem minu bi. Veyotsu, the amunah that they had in me, they left 
uh, when they left Mitzrayim, lehem ayam. So we see very clear that the Yidin had uh, had Amuna, and this is all in 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 uh, the, the Amuna that they had. They had already in the past the Amuna. And what's the other psukim earlier in Perak Dalit Pesuk Lamarav? Yamein Amen. It says Vayikto Vishtachavu in Perak Chav Yud Beis Pesach Chav Zayin. It says when the Hashem gave them. Uh, the the mitzvah carbon pesach it says vayika da'am v'shtachav v'rashi the vayika da'am of besuras agula b'esar it's a besuras habonim shiulam they believed and they bowed down to Hashem and the same parak pasuk lametes it says that the yidden left and they had to hurry up because they had no time to let the dough rise v'gam tzei the leyoso lehem and they had no food for the road so Rashi says v'gam tzei the leyoso lehem l'derech magid shvach and shal yisrael that these extra words. Come to teach you their prayer. How can we go out to the desert without any food? They went out and they had they had faith. So we see in Pshutal Shemikrit that the Yidin had faith beforehand and they had faith afterwards. Brings down the positive. Like the Chachar of Amidbar, Beres Leizurua, that the Yidden had the Muna the whole time. We see also, I didn't see that the Rebbe brought down this pasuk, but it says later on, Meishu was stricken. Leim le Yaminu, Meishu Rabbeinu said, and and Hashem said, "You're saying Lashon Har my people. You say they're not going to believe. Of course they're going to believe. The Yidden are believers. So from all of these psukim we see in Derech Apshat, in Pshutu Shemikra, that the Yidden did believe. I why are they saying my guilty? Uh, that the uh, that we don't have enough grapes in Mitzrayim, so uh, so that the Rebbe explains that you cannot take that literally. That they were in great pain. They had this huge Egyptian army after them, so they believed. So the Rebbe, so the Rebbe explained then as follows: What is Rashi's question when he's looking at these psukim? That it's Manavshach. We have over here. The, the the when you get the pasuk even before you get to the contradiction it says Hashem. So what are they crying out to Hashem for? Did they believe or did they not believe? Manafshach. If they believe, then they have nothing to scream about. Why are they crying to Hashem? And if they don't, if they don't believe, also why are they crying to Hashem? If they believe, they don't need to. And if they don't believe, then what does it help? So that's what Rashi comes to answer with his pirush. This whole parsha doesn't make sense, and in the process, Rashi answers the question of how it fits into the second, the psukim later. And that's what Rashi is saying by Yitzhakot Tovsu Umanos Avesim. That all other cases of Tefillah that we said by the Yaves, they were davening for something. Either Avram was was making a request. There was Bakashat Sarachov, and he was asking Hashem to save Stain. Yitzchok was asking that, that, that for children for Rivka, and Yaakov was. Davening that he should be saved from Esau. So this is a certain type of tefillah. This is a tefillah you have to do. Kiviyach, the Rambam says that the Indian of tefillah midirais is bakoshet So when a person either has a need or there's a special reason that we see from other psukim earlier that when they were given a good besura, when Avram was given a good besura, so then he also thanked Hashem because of the special nature of what was being done. However, there's another dimension of tefillah, and that's the b'chal yin from Omnes, that this is what Yidin do, and this is what our Avas did. They davened even there was no special purpose. When it came over there, it was already after the Maish from Sudeim. There was nothing to do. And when he came out of the Mokam, Asherah Macham, he went over there to daven. Stam to daven. He went over there to daven, because that's what a Jew does. He davens. And so to Lasuach Pesadi, he wasn't davening for anything in particular. Yitzhak went to daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and so for Yivka B'makam, that it was such a holy place. Oh, I should daven there, Yaakov Avinu said. But it wasn't a Bakasha like other cases of Tefillah. And that's why, although it seems that these case, these psukim seem to be so not characteristic of the whole idea of Tefillah and the Rabbah, that's the whole point that Rashi is trying to tell us. And that's also the union of Umanus, of Umanus, that it's in their profession, that Yidin, that's what they do, and that's what they daven. And Nacha Bilti Muga, the Muga de Kasicha. The Rebbe touches up the union of Umnes. is a Hainu Shabazer Chayes Vageshmak Shalei. That that's the Chayes and that's the Geshmak. What a Yid enjoys to do, a Yid enjoys to daven. So therefore, the questions are all answered. Both the, how the 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 psukim fit in about the apparent contradiction between Pasuk Yud and later on the Miman of Shach. Why are they davening if they believe? They believe, but they weren't davening as, as crying out to Hashem. They were davening because it was time to daven. So they davened. And so too, we understand why it needs to be explained over here, unlike the beginning in Perak Base in Shmeis, because over there the Yidden were davening for their needs. Explains the Lashon Umnes, 
and explains what the question is. So all the questions of the Sikha are answered. At the end, the Rebbe brings Ayrala Maisa, two different lessons that we can derive from our daily service of Hashem. One is that just that we see that the davening was not for a particular purpose. It was lishma for the sake of davening. So too, that a yid, when it comes time to limer he doesn't have to learn just, he needs to know what to do. So he opens up a sefer because he has to find out what it is he's supposed to be doing. No, he learns tere because you're supposed to learn tere. And so to the infant tefillah, in order to connect ourselves to HaKadosh Baruch So that's why we have the infant tefillah, we do it lishma. And so too, uh, regarding Azulis, regarding uh, another Yid, you don't see necessarily that he's davening, and you don't necessarily see that he's learning, but you should know he's part of the Am Yisrael, that he's also children of the of, of the Aves. And therefore he has this umness, he has this inner trait, this inner characteristic of a desire to connect himself with a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and therefore he should be related to as such.